Hi, folks. Thanks to be here for this talk about an introduction to open telemetry tracing. You can think about observability at the next level as, as to provide insight into not only one single component, but about distributed system. And there actually are three main pillars of observability. The first is metric, the second is logging, and the third is tracing. So basically tracing is a set of techniques and tools that, set, that help follow a business request across the network through multiple components. This is really, really important. Again, in distributed system, you've got multiple components, your transaction, your business transaction, will require all of those components to work together to achieve the business goal. If one of them fails, you're in deep trouble. And if it's repeatedly the same component that has an issue, you need to be aware of it. So tracing the request across all those components is important. I believe you probably are aware about some of the tracing pioneers existing already. So there is Zipkin, Jaeger, Open Tracing. Those are the three most like widespread and famous. Every one of them had proprietary like interfaces and implementation. But as you know, we want something to be standardized so that the whole like software that you write, we can write libraries that have one standard. And for that, there is something called the W3C trace context configuration. It's quite easy to read, so you can already do that at home. And basically, if you are, well, if you don't have time, let me refresh it for you. Basically, you've got two important concepts. The first concept is the idea of a trace. And trace is actually like the abstraction of the business transaction. So the trace will go from entry points to like the utmost deeply nested component and back again. That's the trace. And then you've got a span. The span is actually the execution of one part of the trace in a single component. And you can have, of course, for uh, each component, you can have multiple spans if you're interested, where inside this component where the flow of the request goes. And each of those spans are bounded together in a parent child relationship. So the first, the first one is the important one. The first component is the important one. It gives the first span ID. And then the next component will check the span ID of the parent and will say, hey, I, will, I am this span ID. So it also generates a new span ID and say, hey, I'm bound with this one. And through all those like parent-child relationship, you can actually make sense of the flow and check the flow overview in one set. Open telemetry is a set of tools that implements observability and that relies actually on double three C trace context. So it's an implementation and more. So it's compatible. And it also go be beyond because W3C is good for web stuff, but perhaps you want to trace a request through, I don't know, Kafka. So some, somewhere where you can store. And in this case, the specification doesn't handle it. Open telemetry allows you to trace this business transaction across many different components, not only web ones. Uh, if it's a merge of the open tracing or an open census project, so it's one of those uh, few merges that were successful where people decided to join their efforts to create something better. Uh, it has become a CNCF project, which is good, meaning that it has support. It will be supported for a long time. Uh, it's licensed under the Apache license, so it's also good if you want to use it right away. Um, you don't need to uh, like acquire a license or whatever. And it's hugely, hugely, hugely popular especially on GitHub. The architecture in itself is quite easy. Basically, you've got components, whatever they are, and then you've got what they call an open telemetry connector. And this open tele telemetry connector like accepts data in a specific format. And this specific format allows to have these like parent-child relationship between spans. So the idea is on the client side, 
you've got stuff that dumps data into the hotel, uh, hotel collector, and then you've got something that is able to search and display data from the hotel collector. The Open Telemetry Collector in itself doesn't provide anything. It's just a storage stuff in a certain format. So we need something afterwards. Open Telemetry provides a dedicated collector, but actually Jaeger and Zimkin, which are also uh, like tracing providers, they are able to provide the same collector, or let's put it that way. They also provide a collector which accepts Open Telemetry data. So basically what they did, they kept the storage engine, they added a new interface where you can set your data in open telemetry format. If you already have your architecture, your tracing architecture, you can easily move to open telemetry because, well, the collectors of Zipkin and Jaeger, they have this additional interface. You need, just need to change the formats and the ports because I think every one of them has different ports. On the client side, it's, well, I wouldn't say easy, but the first step is straightforward. First step is auto-instrumentation. This is only available when you've got a runtime. For example, on the uh, Java side, you have the GMM that is on a runtime. On the Python side, well, Python is a runtime. Node.js is a runtime. Um, in this case, you will delegate to the runtime to do like auto-instrumentation. I told you about like, automatically logging, uh, entering, and exiting a method, it's exactly the same. Here, you will do that automatically. It gives you already a lot of insight. Now, if you want to go further, you can actually get the library, depending on your tech stack. Again, you can check the Open Telemetry website. You will notice there are lots and lots of stacks that are supported out of the box. And for Java, there is one, for Python, there is one, for Rust, there is one. Whatever rocks your boat, probably you will find there. And then you can either like call an API or use some annotation. I mentioned it's practical introduction. So here, let's try to do some practical stuff finally that we have delved into the theory. So here is my use case. My use case is, well, simple <laughs> for a real application, but a bit more involved for a demo. So at the beginning of an API gateway, I'm using the Apache API Sets gateway. It forwards uh, the request to my main application, which is a, a Spring Boot Kotlin application. Actually, it gives like products API, and then it has the detail for the product itself, but it relies on two other components. The one for the pricing, the pricing is implemented in Python through a Flask, uh, and the framework application and for the stocks. So how many uh, items do I have in which warehouse? I have created a REST application using the XM framework. So the entry point is actually the reverse proxy API gateway. Most information systems have such an entry point. You probably never expose your application directly over the internet. You have something in between because, well, you are <laughs> like you want to protect your information system from an illegal access. So that's the most important point. As I mentioned, I'm using Apache API 6. Perhaps you don't know about Apache API 6. It's an Apache project. So basically, again, like good for maintenance. Everything will be there with a license that will never change. It's based on the very successful Nginx reverse proxy. Then you've got like a Lua JIT uh, additional open RESTy layer on top which allow you to do scripting in Lua over the Nginx. And then you've got out of the box plugins. So to configure it, there is this general configuration. As I mentioned, the like uh, Apache API 6 as a plugin architecture. So here I say, hey, I will be using Open Telemetry. It's an out of the box plugin. You don't need to write any code. And then you can tell, hey, this is the name by which I, will, I want to be known in the data of Open Telemetry. And this is where I will send the data. So I will be using Docker Compose. And so I have the dedicated Jaeger component. Then for each route, so here I have a single one, but you can have different configuration depending on which route. You will say, OK, how much sample do I want? Normally, and depending on your volume, you probably don't want 100% because it will 
overflow your stuff. You, you want a, a sample. Here, this is a demo. I will say I want to sample everything. Again, probably not what you want to do. And then you can log additional attributes. So here, for example, I decided for no reason, but for demo purpose, to have the root ID, the request method, and an additional header. So if I, I can pass through the clients some headers, and they will be like traced along the span. The next step is the GVM level. As I mentioned, GVM is a runtime, so I can easily use auto instrumentation. And on the GVM, auto instrumentation is for Java agent. So this is quite easy, actually. I just need to pass the Java agent when I start the application, and I don't need to write anything. So your developers, they are completely isolated from this tracing concern. They can write their code, and everything will work as expected. This is regardless of the language and the framework, because it's the GVM. So here, this is how it works. Here is my Docker file to build my Docker container. This is a multi-stage uh, Docker file. First, I will compile everything for a GDK. And afterwards, I will run it for a GRE because I don't need a GDK and it's actually bigger and less secure. So the first thing I do is like normal standard build. And then afterwards, I get the jar that I just built and I add the Java agent through GitHub. And when I run it, actually, I run it through the Java agent. And this is as simple as it gets. You cannot be simpler. Afterwards, you can do more precise, more fine-grained calls through manual instrumentation. It needs an explicit dependency in the application. This time, your developers need to be aware of it. And then there are two ways to do that, either through a regular explicit API call or through annotation. I'm benefiting from Spring Boot, so basically I will use annotation. I will issue the code just afterwards. Okay, now it's time to delve into the codes. I will just focus on the like Kotlin Spring Boot ports. Everything is on GitHub, so in case you need to check, you can check the Python port, you can check the uh, Rust ports. Uh, here I will focus on the Java stuff. I've created uh, my application on uh, Spring Boot Starter, start.spring.io. So here I'm using the latest version of Spring Boot. I'm using the like latest LTS version of Java, which is required by the latest version of Spring Boot. I'm using also the latest version of Scotland. And then it's a reactive application. So I will be fetching data using R2DBC. Otherwise, I'm using WebFlux, so again, to be reactive, and the rest is just like standard Kotlin stuff. I didn't want to bother myself with a regular database, so I'm using H2, using the R2 uh, DBC H2 reactive driver. On the code side itself, here I'm using Kotlin, so I want to use core routines because, well, that's how you can do easily uh, reactive code stuff. So I'm using the core routine CRUD repository. This is my, like, R2DBC repository. Here I have the handler. And you can see that I have suspend function. Huh? Suspend function are like four coroutines in Kotlin. Then I have like one endpoint and the other endpoint. This one endpoint is for all products. This one endpoint is for a single product. Uh, let's see. Let's see the first one. Okay. And then the rest will be exactly the same. So I will fetch all product. I will find all of them into the repository, which we in turn will look into the H2 database. And for every one of them, which probably what you shouldn't do in real life, I will fetch the product details. So whether, uh, not whether, but their price and their availability in the stock. So here I can see how it works. Again, I will have two different calls, like protected under a nesting block, which means that here, because I'm using this picture.io, they will make the calls in parallel. And we can check that it worked like this in the traces. So I will get the, the price, I will get the stocks. Then I will merge everything. And here is how I merge everything. So I transform data into the expected data. And at the end, I create a product with details, including the products from the database in the catalog, plus the price, plus the stocks that I have like change a bit, for example, I don't want to return to the client any warehouse where the continuity is 
like zero or less because well not zero or less just zero doesn't make sense so i just filter them out and at the end i'm using the pins dsl from kotlin and the router dsl or here the core router dsl to assemble everything and i start my application with this bins method so even if you are not familiar with kotlin if you are a java developer i think it should talk to you and here you can see my two endpoints slash products for products and slash products slash id for my product now i assemble everything through docker compose so this is the docker compose file i'm using jaeger uh, jaeger is available in multiple flavors you can have like different containers for example here i'm using the all-in-one so i'm using the uh, like batteries included package docker image in this case so i can already have the open uh, telemetry collector provided by jaeger so it has it's not the open telemetry collector it's the jaeger collector that allows an open telemetry interface so here i don't need to think about the architecture of jaeger i'm just using the docker image that does everything then i'm using api 6 because i want to protect my services then i have the catalog which is the Spring Boot Kotlin application that I've just shown. And here I need to tell several like configuration parameters. The first one is where does the um, Java agent need to send the data? Well, to Jaeger on this port. How does it, how will it flag this component? Here it will be called orders, which is wrong. It should be catalog. Then here does I want to export metrics. Here I said, no, I don't want, of course, depending what you want to do, you can also export metrics and logs and logs the same. And now pricing, I do the same for the Python application, but again, this is not relevant for this talk. So here pricing, same stuff for the Python application, not relevant for this talk. Stock, same things for the Rust application, not relevant for this talk. Let's start this architecture. So it might take a bit of time, especially with uh, the GVM to start. I will just like speed the time and let's go very fast. Okay, the logs tell us that it has started. We can uh, check with Docker PS. Docker PS. So here it seems that everything has started. We've got the catalog, the pricing, the stock, and Jaeger. Now we can issue our first my curl so curl i will be using the header that i have configured apache api 64 so if i remember it's hotel key and then i can say let's say hello world because i have no imagination and i'm on localhost 9080 which is apache api 6 uh, default port and we'll say products so it takes a bit of time because it will go through all our systems. So here you can already see that the catalog has taken, then none of the stocks, the pricing, and Apache API 6 as well. So we've got the response, which is not very interesting as it is, but it still gives you the data you ask. And now the idea is to check the traces. So I'm now on uh, like the Jaeger web UI, and I can check and I will go exactly here, and here we can see all the services. So there are some traces here I need to refresh because here I need to find the traces. And here we have single request because we sample everything here. We have it, and we can see already with only auto instrumentation, a lot of interesting data. So we can see that we have our uh, API 6, which is the entry point. And here we have the orders, which I misnamed. It should be called catalog, but here it's orders. And here we have the product. Here we have the first auto instrumentation inside of product because we are using Spring Boot. We have lots of proxies inside, you know, how Spring Boot works. And here I decided, hey, here I will make a call for a proxy. I will trace it. Here we have the final. Why? Because it's an interface provided by Spring Boot. We didn't provide the implementation. So basically, again, it's a proxy. So it's automatically traced we can see what here that there is a call to the other components called uh, stock so it's traced as well which is good and here we've got the second one so here there is one for stock and one for pricing and here we see that in one case i went directly to the component and the other one went through the api gateway both are completely possible this is how i configured it 
in inside sorry my uh, architecture basically in one case you can say i want to protect everything that i always need to get back to the api gateway to do some authentication authorization whatever you want and the other side you say oh i'm pretty secure i can directly go for it but it gives you insight into your architecture as well in case you misconfigure something you can check it through the traces something interesting as well we can see that the, the get calls through the to the stock and the pricing they are made in parallel because we use coroutine so this is also a good way to check that you actually coded your stuff correctly if you see one going after the other then probably your code was not right though tracing is not made to do that you can also validate some of the code and then as i mentioned it's not good to do that but here for each of them i go to the stock and the pricing stock and pricing stock and pricing and we check for we can check for example that on apache api 6 i actually add the additional stuff that i sent so basically the routes and the get and here i'm missing the hotel stuff so probably i didn't use the right one but believe me it should work now that also that already give us some information about our flow but we want, might want to bear we might want for example um, on the get to say like which internal before which internal method did we call which parameter so let's do it so now i want manual instrumentation it means i need to explicitly couple myself to the library so here because i'm using spring as i said i want annotations i don't want to have api calls actually if you check the documentation of the open telemetry in java to get uh, an exporter is not that fun uh, requires a lot of api calls and well i have annotations spring boot is compatible with open telemetry so let's use it so i've added this like additional dependency in my code and now we can check the application itself the code itself and we can go here and here we can see that i've added like here this with span so this with span means that it will be instrumented and you will find it in the trace so i should have this product handler products if i'm calling one single product i will have this one but it's also possible to use additional details so for example here i will have this product handler fetch but i also say hey here not only capture this call capture this id so which product id will i fetch which means that here it's interesting because normally i shouldn't need it here you see that the id parameter is not used because i already have the product but because i want to capture the uh, id i need to separate this parameter so i wouldn't be able to uh, capture the span attribute product because then i would have uh, not the id but the whole memory reference unless i create a two string whatever which is not a great idea so here i change my 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 method signature a bit to explicitly pass the id and then well i don't use it but then it means that this will be captured by uh, the tracing by spring boots and i will find it which might be super useful especially if it fails so normally now everything should have started and we can try again with this configuration so here it's the same request i've just changed the header because <laughs> i missed the previous header it was not hotel it was ot so let's run this again we can check that everything works on the logging side so here i'm in the catalog then i'm in the stock the pricing whatever i've got the response and we can check back on the jaeger ui how it looks like we expect more details so first we can already see that we have more spans than before uh, just to check on the api apache api 6 side we can see that now my ot key this header has been logged which is good and then we can see that i have the products here i have the fetch here so basically we added additional data so inside the components we added a couple more spans to understand how the flow of the code went inside the components not only throughout across components so thanks for your attention i i hope you learned something i showed you how you could use open telemetry how you could use auto instrumentation how you could use 
manual instrumentation and I believe now you can start your journey.